then then you will enjoy the session but i'll just take uh, three to five, four minutes of the time so like many people i've been eating a lot of junk probably 10 15 years back i've been eating like uh, every day in the morning i used to prefer to eat one pound of m and m's every day that kind of junk i used to eat name anything like go to pizza buffets and eat uh, three or four full pizzas with all sausage links you name anything i actually ate all sorts of junk even at one point of time doctors told me that i have a hypothyroidism and that cannot be cured then uh, doctor said that uh, i'm a ticking time bomb because my cholesterol is high my blood everything is high that's what people were saying so but i still never bothered i have been eating all junk as if the world is going to come tomorrow uh, come to an end tomorrow so but some incident happened uh, one somebody close to me like they got into an emergency situation it, it started made me to think that i need to change myself so i started trying out you know i first i started with the quinoa when I mean, people have been eating quinoa in the for, for the last 5 6 years but uh, i tried it 15 years back then i used to eat something goji berry from uh, china himalayas then uh, something you know i started feeling that it is not right because uh, we can't just go and buy something in the moon something on the mars it's not going to work we need to adapt to simple lifestyle luckily uh, one friend by name siddeshwar guba who is here introduced me to dr kadar's lecture so uh, that's it. it it completely changed my my, my thinking and i decided to really pursue that lifestyle and uh, i luckily got connected to dr kadar like uh, i mean i would like i mean i have been accompanying him in america for the last uh, four or five years this is the 16th or 17th event we are doing in america and this is fourth or fifth event in uh, uh, <coughs> houston and uh, in my experience with the uh, interaction with dr kadar and many people hundreds of thousands of people got benefited like people, there are thousands of people who are uh, having a terminally ill disease like uh, cancer and uh, even multiple sclerosis they got cured so the, i really this is the really lifestyle i want to adopt remaining my life not only myself i want to make sure that many of my friends are i want everybody on the planet to adopt this simple lifestyle so that's why I, that's why i'm here to basically introduce you to dr kadar but before that because many of you are um, first time coming to this i would like to also say a few things about you may be wondering who is dr kadar very easy easy from planet earth or not like that you may be having wondering so i'll just give you some idea about uh, him dr kadar wali is a native of prudutur town kadapa district andhra pradesh he has been working relentlessly in reviving siridhanya and also known as positive millets for the last 20 years after having completed a masters in science from the regional institute of education mysore he went on to get his phd from indian institute of sciences bengaluru for his work involving, involving steroids he married his classmate usha ji he pursued his postdoctoral research fellowship environmental science from beaverton oregon in usa his research involved deactivation of deadly chemical substances such as dioxin at a time when food was being rapidly commercialized after completing his postdoctoral research at oregon he worked as a food scientist in the central food technology research institute at mysore later he worked in various sections of dupont in wilmington delaware in the usa for over 5 years it was almost 28 years ago when dr kadar ji encountered the case of a girl who had begun menstruating at the age of 6 dr kadar was shocked this and many other such cases got doctor asking questions to find the root of the problem he decided to go back to india to strive towards making a healthier society therefore he returned to india from the us in 1997 and settled down in, in mysore he worked hard to revive five different types of millet that were fast disappearing in the process of consuming each of these millets he discovered that the healing properties present in them could cure even deadly diseases hence he named these five millets siridhanya to cultivate them naturally dr kadar worldly propounded a method called kadu krishi also known as jungle farming what exactly is that is basically you can without paying any money you can produce your own uh, liquid called atavika dravanam and with that you should be able to regenerate the soil for the last 30 years dr kadar wali has been working incessantly and tirelessly conducting thousands of programs all over the world so we welcome dr kadar garu to come on stage at the same time i request uh, bangaru uh, to come and say a few words bangaru ready please come on come on stage the health in the kitchen don't try to find in the hospitals here thank you
is it what is it and also uh, I, i would like to request suresh patel ji of uh, gsh center to come on the stage and uh, say a few words and also i want to thank you uh, gsh center for giving this facility for connecting today program thank you suresh ji please Namaste. On behalf of uh, GSH Event Center, I'd like to welcome you all at this very special, very unique uh, <coughs> seminar or presentation can call. And I think <coughs> it is going to be a, something we all going to like it. Again, welcome and thank you very much. to take any more time i know that every minute that we spend with dr kadarwal is very precious and uh, especially in the summer season and lot of people are out of the country and uh, so whoever is you know here they are here to see and uh, listen to our dr kadarwal i would like to say a few words about dr kadarwal he was here for one of the convention and recently we had another convention in washington dc and uh, you know that in any convention we talk more about uh, you know who is the singer who is the musician uh, what are the other things that are happening but we focus less on health habits and living and and the diet so when i he came few years ago like uh, to sai mandir i believe that was the first time i listened to dr kadarwali very simple very effective powerful way of uh, how we can change our health habits by just eating good right tree food especially millets i call him the millet man millet guru and uh, we are very fortunate that he is here with us the why i keep saying is health is very important we have inflation everywhere as you see inflation in the food inflation in the economy everything so in order to really come back to live nature to close to the nature let us listen to dr kadarwali not he is not going to talk more about just uh, you know it's not like an inadam but it is a practice that he is going to say you know for example he was explaining which touched me that uh, you know isha foundation uh, talks more about save soil but uh, dr kadarwal very clearly mentioned in order to save soil we have to be the active participants of that it's not that we go around tell everybody but it's it has to start with us let's listen for him but all i want to say is is truthful sincere and it's like a is doing like a freedom fighter for us and is going around the country in india going to the villages transforming the villages with the, uh, you know making millets as the main food and he continues to propagate the same here in united states let's welcome him let's conduct more such sessions so that at least our next generation will be saved from you know certain things that we hear you know menstruation is starting at the age of 4 and 6 we would like to hear so let's eat a healthy food let's have a healthy life and 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 live longer and let's listen from dr kadarwali thank you so much all for uh, coming on this hot summer day <laughs> uh, it's been a whirlwind tour for me for the last 7 uh, days we have this is my 6th session the last 7 days uh, raj has been relentless in uh, taking me around all places and we have been jumping the time zones here and there and doing all these things and uh, it's been a pleasure and uh, yeah back in 1987 when i came first time 1986 or 87 i met a small girl of 6 years age menstruating and uh, that shocked me uh, it was like 10 atomic bombs dropped on my head of course no one was worried about that no one thought anything about that so i started uh, probing and finding the truth about why a 6 year old girl should menstruate and it was so obvious for me that these guys to make the ladies who have given birth to go back to their 
so called work instead of babies being fed for 9 months from the mother's breast they wanted to cut short to maybe 6 weeks or even for that matter 3 weeks so they wanted the babies to be fed by cow's milk i believe instead of mother's milk cow's milk so they looked around and they oh, have one cow is there in india so they brought the cow and said oh this cow is only 1 liter of milk so they just did some manipulations genetic manipulations hybrid technology biotechnology and then they created a cow that can give 20 liters of milk so they used steroids they used antibiotics ivf technology all these things and produced enough milk so they started creating these kinds of cows in billions so now they call it white revolution and they said this milk is a1 we are producing in so large quantities and then all at a sudden that indian cow became a2 number 1 a1 and then the real natural thing was left behind called a2 milk so that's how this a1 a2 milk came about and then when kids started drinking this a1 milk the hormone imbalance the residues found in the milk and then the changes that they have brought down being a natural milk kids started having the hormonal imbalance lo and behold the age at which they started menstruation which was 14 15 all over the for millions of years started coming down in the last 7 8 decades now all over the world girls are menstruating below 10 years average and now in america i believe the average is 8 years and now and then you have some queer cases where the girls are menstruating at the age of 3 at the age of 2 in fact in my clinic last before month there was there were two cases coming from a village small village girls menstruating at the age of 2 or 3 2 and half to 3 and the bleeding <coughs> hemorrhage not stopping and uh, what to do they resort to steroids if they give steroid the hemorrhage stops otherwise no so again hormonal therapy immunotherapy all kinds of new technologies terminologies but the problem is not going away because what they are feeding the babies is the cause and in fact if the human race stops milk from tomorrow within 6 months we can close down half the hospitals on this planet half the hospitals of the planet can be closed down if you stop drinking milk but then in the last 50 60 years the whole planet the doctors the scientists including naturopaths believe that milk is okay milk is good milk is complete food it's absolute absolute scientific myth you are designed to drink your mother's milk and if the same mother gives the second baby birth the second baby's milk is not the first baby's milk that is what signs for you because the enzyme that digests the milk gets switched off genetically in human stomach at the age of 2 and after 3 this is the fact it is kept aside no one talks about it. so when i say don't take milk people look at me as if i am a mad fellow but believe me if you all stop drinking milk it just takes only 6 months half the hospitals will not have any work that much health gets back to your bodies because it is the re- reason we have hundreds of varieties of autoimmune diseases setting in very early in our bodies and immunity loss because of the hormones the milk and the extra doses of antibiotics we are wiping away microbes that are in our gut and causing microbial imbalance 
gut microbes are not there anymore. The diversified, wonderful, various kinds of microbes are wiped out because of our food, just the milk alone. So this fundamental observation that we have upgraded the milk to be the food of the whole human planet as if that is not enough, concentrating it, making it paneer or cheese. Now it's not the milk, it is the cheese consumed in tons and tons quantities and to produce that cheese we have devastated the natural resources of the planet. So the micro imbalance that you create in a small body now establishes itself as a micro imbalance on this planet. See, it is the food. It is the choice of the food. It is the way we did ourselves into has caused this big and small problems. Of course, a human being, for human being it is the biggest problem. And that lays down the foundation for many diseases. And uh, we didn't stop at that. And I'm trying to actually give you the essence of the whole problems we have created in the last 40, 50 years. And then we travel to the solution part. So we have created microbial imbalance, we have created hormonal imbalance, and then the bomb culture, the war culture, the war material, the bombs, was to be diffused because every day you do not go to war on this planet. After the Second World War, they had a huge pile of these bomb materials all over the world. All the nations stockpiling these bomb materials. And then they figured out this material can be converted into fertilizers where you can grow wheat or rice, which are C3 foods, increase the water logging, the yield increased. So they said, la, voila, we have found a method to produce more food. And that producing more food became more important than what food they are producing. So these C3 foods do not have fiber interlocutated into the carbohydrate. So we started eating carbohydrate in large quantities without control. So the blood of human bodies getting started to get the infusion of glucose in flood-like manner. So there is no regulation of glucose entering the blood of the human bodies in the last 40-50 years. The whole human race started consuming. Can you believe all over the world people are eating rice, wheat and of course sugar. India alone now produces 68 lakh tons of sugar per year. And no one knows how much America produces. It produces. They have evaporated Everglades of Florida. California is out of water because of sugar cane production. And of course they said it is too much blood glucose spoiling your microbes, spoiling your hormones. So essentially what I'm trying to communicate to you is that in the last five to six decades, we have successfully managed to make the human race not notice these changes. And everyone, with all due respect, all the intellectuals, all the scientists, all the experts, these three dealing with. This is where the human race is. No disease is curable. Diabetes, incurable. Thyroid, incurable. BP, incurable. Rheumatism, incurable. Cancer, till you live. You should smile and laugh. But we are not going to be able to because this, each and every disease is a very serious condition. This is the problems we are facing. These are the problems we are facing. And we are not even ready to acknowledge that these are the problems. And in fact, much more serious problems are going to be mentioned now. Italy. 
the growth is minus one. That means there are no kids born in Italy. Germany, minus point two. See, all the Europe and Western countries have no growth. That means kids are not born going into future. Are you with me? Are you with me? And then in the past 20, 25 years, you are seeing LGBTQ 25%. You see what I am talking? You are changing the nature of human beings. This is such a huge problem. Where are the kids going to come from? India. We see all these problems 20-30 years delayed, that's all. That's how India is the only country now having 40 to 45 crores of functional youth below 30 years of age. Nowhere else. But the problems have started. We also have got now 3 to 6 percent of LGBTs in India. 13 percent of mentally disabled kids are born on every year. Almost average of the planet. Six percent of the kids are born with hole in the heart. There is no acknowledging these facts because we are busy building multi-speciality hospitals to manage these problems. Where do you find the solution? Do you find the solution in tranquilizers? Do you find the solution in nerve communications being snubbed by some chemicals? We have not been asking these questions at all. At what cost? Cost of pharmaceutical, cost of so-called allopathic treatment. This is the dire situation that we are all facing. So going into the future, next 20, 30 years, we are not going to have a tsunami, we are not going to have something falling on our head. We are not going to have atomic bomb. We are going to kill ourselves slowly and steadily. The human race eliminating itself. And we are not recognizing this at all. So, stop, take two deep breaths. We don't have time to do that also. Because the so-called meditation so-called yoga people. Um. Is something going? Some big truck. Oh, oh, there's another event. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll continue then. I need to speak a little more loud. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I need to speak a little more. That's okay. So we all need to acknowledge these unnatural things that we are doing. So what we have done is we have changed our food. We have made it monoculture. All over the world, in fact, back in India, Bengaluru, on a daily basis, orders Zomato Swiggy 8.8 .8 million orders. 
88 lakh orders per day. There is no kitchen in Bangalore. So you see where we have lost our health? We have lost our health and Bengaluru claims 42% BP patient out of 100. 36% are diabetic patients. 18% rheumatism. 31% arthritis. It's crossed 100 already, these numbers. And whatever next I am going to tell is going to add what it means is each person does not have one disease, each person has two or three more diseases. And what are we waiting for? No one wants to correct these problems and we are going to add on these diseases and we have proof for it. Each and every city in India, each and every village in India now has got a hospital. And in Hyderabad, each street, one kilometer, we have more than three hospitals. And this trend is increasing in every city of India. So what does that mean? If our science is right, if our progress is right, we should have been decreasing the hospitals. No, it is just the other way around. The graph is just shooting. And not just Indian context. I believe it is the same in every part of the world. So that means we are all doing the same thing. Same diseases. Diseases. And now of course, America adds more complicated diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, nerve related issues, each name is different and now they are, do not understand what these are coming from and they started using a term called syndrome. Because it is not one thing, it is a group of things that are happening and they do not know, they have no clue and they started calling it syndromes. So much has happened. Nothing is being done about it. So we have health in the kitchen and we are searching our health in the hospitals. You see this stark problem? So you need to get back your kitchen. You need to get back to your the food. Because these diseases were not there when the kitchens were thriving. Be it in America, be it in India, be it in New Zealand, be it in Russia. So the culture of getting away from kitchens is the source of all our problems. And believe me, America, Europe, has complicated their problem because once the kitchen started disappearing, the family, fabric of family started disappearing. The relationships started evaporating. Problems have now leaped over into social fabric and then the whole human relationships have been just going haywire. Believe me, the same thing is happening in India, just 15-20 years delayed, nothing different. Nothing different. Same diseases, same problems, same issues. So, to complicate the problems, we have so-called drugs, we have called uh, tobacco, we have called coffee, we have got tea. The addictive habits of human race, the alkaloids in it, are making life more miserable. So, this is the background. And all these issues were grappled by my mind in 1987, when I first met that 
small girl menstruating. So he could not stay back here because things are very different here. So I thought I would go back and start doing something real about it. So first problem was how do we solve the glucose imbalance? That means the food that we are eating is pumping the blood with the glucose in short span of time. So the simple experiment I tried to set and do was to feed a diabetic patient with different grains and collect his or her urine and check the glucose. That's called renal tolerance test, which is a known test. I'm not invented that. So I have collected 10 diabetic patients and started feeding them each day or two days one grain and collect after one hour the urine and check whether the glucose has spiked or not. So lo and behold with rice and wheat within 30 minutes you have a glucose spike. So I tested 12 grains. Out of that 5 grains Kodo millet, foxtail millet, little millet, barnyard millet, brown top millet. These were actually not there when I went back in 1997. I had to go deep into villages, meet old people of 80 years and above age and ask them what were you eating at those days when they were kids, when there was no rice, when there was no wheat. Collected fistful of these grains and started growing them in to make large quantities, two, three kilos, and then went to the farmers, requested them, in fact, took their lands, barren lands, and gave them money to grow back and in eight quintals, ten quintals, got them and started feeding this so-called modern-day life diseased, sick conditions. So these five grains had the renal tolerance test even if they were HbA1c 10 patients, we got these five grains glucose observed only after four to five hours. That means glucose is not coming into the blood suddenly like flood. It is being released in a regulated, slow, steady fashion. And that creates glucose balance in the human blood. And that is the basis for homeostasis because once the glucose is in large quantities in the blood it start parching the living cells takes the water so to solve that problem the emergency metabolism is switched on by liver by pancreas by endocrine systems you start making more cholesterol more triglycerides more glycogen more fat and all these extra materials have to be stacked in somewhere so it is the blood vessels being packed, it is the glucose being thrashed upon the hemoglobin itself creating diabetic condition. Lo and behold from 1950s all over the world decade by decade the diabetic numbers went on increasing 5%, 10% and there we have WHO coming out every 5 years each zone this country is going to have more diabetic patients by this year. And that was only the job this WHO was doing, declaring the diseases. I mean, I'm just speaking the things that happened. You see, it is so obvious that we missed the bus. We chose the wrong foods for human race. Just because you could make them in large quantities. There was no science in it at all. I mean, any biochemist should know that the last product, that is glucose, that enters the blood, then enters to the living cells, being burnt to generate ATP and releases carbon dioxide. This is the simple metabolism, how we get energy to live. Not only we, the whole 
bloody living things on this planet. Why I use the word specifically bloody? Because it is the blood that circulates these things. So it is the digestion, it is the digestive canal that is the centerpiece of all these living things. And we are neglecting what this digestive canal requires and how it functions. So you feed the last product as first product, raw material, because America consumes Dunkin' Donuts as soon as they get up in the morning. And no doctor wants to say that is wrong. Sugar. Within two minutes it gives you glucose into your blood, even before it goes into the blood right on your <coughs> gums and tongue, you start having glucose. And as a biochemist, we should have been warning people, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right. The opposite of this happened. Each and every country building dams, cutting the forests, growing the sugar. That's how even the aquifers, the underground water table has disappeared all over the world because everyone is busy growing cane sugar or beet sugar, whatever water is consumed and we are producing tons and tons and tons of this. And in our country there are some people called Gujaratis, for them nothing matters other than sugar. Even dal chawal they want to put sugar. My God. And then they are ready. Ahmedabad, number one capital of diabetes. I go to Hyderabad. No, we are number one. We eat 24 into 7 palau. This is what we are getting. And it is such a big scientific blunder that we chose this as foods for human race. We never ask these questions because it is the corporate consuming factory food culture that is driving all the governments and policies. Do you know in 1954 India introduces a law called Wonder Drug Act. It says below diseases cannot be cured. If someone says they are cured, he can be put in jail. In 1954 we didn't even know what diabetes word is. That means it is very well planned in the boardrooms of these corporate companies that we are going to make India a diabetes center and we are going to sell the medicines. Do you know in 2013 and 14 the pharmaceutical company's profit was 827 billion dollars, just diabetes pharmaceuticals. One by third of it is from India. So what would solve this problem? Just doctor says stop eating rice and wheat. As simple as that. And that's what I did in 1997 when I went back. It took me three years to grow enough to feed few of these patients. We did that. Gangrene patients, dialysis patients, retinopathy patients, neuropathy patients. We have taken 10 to 20 of each and fed them these wonderful five grains which releases glucose slowly, steadily into the bloodstream. Lo and behold, in three months, everything got reversed. Gangrene patients, back to normal, absolutely no issues walking, fingers saved, legs saved. Retinopathy, people who are losing their sight started seeing back. Creatinine going high into 6, 7, reverse back to 1.1. That is a solution, a permanent solution. Then they started calling me magic man. I'm not doing magic. Then they said, no, no, it is not your magic, it is the magic of the millets, they said. Millets are not doing magic. 
they are working on fantastic fundamental scientific principle of releasing glucose slowly and steadily into your bloodstream eradicating the glucose imbalance that you have created for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Lo and behold, we have kids of age 3, 4 and we name it juvenile diabetes because the pancreas, because of this high sugar not able to manage, stopped functioning, start releasing insulin which is the hormone that takes the glucose from the blood into the living cells. We did wonders even with the juvenile diabetes. We started correcting the hormone releasing capacity of the pancreas by cleaning it up with wonderful natural oils. So we fed the babies, I mean baby I mean three years, six years, ten years old kids with naturally bull driven ghani oils early morning first thing three to four spoons within three to four months the insulin need for this babies started coming down in a matter of six months to two years we were able to remove the insulin dependency almost 90 to 95 percent of the kids and now there are kids who are now 20 21 years because we started this way back in 2001 now kids age of 25 15, 17, no insulin, doing good. Just eating these five grains because the glucose balance is corrected. And then we devised a technique called fermented porridge. In our language, South Indian language, we call Ambali. And in North Indian language, we call it Khamir. That is a way of correcting the microbial imbalance we have created because of this drugging and in fact natural births are completely robbed off from human race 68 percent of births are now cesarean on this planet that means the mother when the baby is coming out of the vagina lodges inoculum into the mouth and we have the first inoculum of the gut microbes for the baby which is robbed off in the name of whatever goes, cesarean births and things. So, in fact, the modern living has enabled this microbial imbalance in the first instance itself. On top of it, no mother's milk, cow's milk. Cow gives milk for whom? For its calf. And here we are in the name of science declaring that milk is complete food, writing in our science books, feeding ourselves and our babies. No, it's not just feeding babies. Everyone started drinking, oh, you get calcium, oh, it is good for your bones and this and that. And believe me, no calcium metabolism is helped with milk. In fact, it's all the negative effects you have. No, 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 it's because vitamin D is not there. We will fortify vitamin D with the milk. And then people started drinking fortified milk with vitamin D in the last 20 years all over the world. And lo and behold, last 15 years, the human race, the most deficient vitamin is vitamin D. And vitamin D you don't get from fortified milk. You go and stand in the sun, your skin, lower part of the skin makes vitamin D and it is going to be stored in your liver and that's what can help you in 108 various biochemical process to keep you healthy including your immunity and here we are vaccinating the whole world instead of telling the human population please get up in the morning at sunrise and have some vitamin D and that's what our country, our country, where we come from, said Surya Namaskar. The orange color, the ochre color, sun's rays initiate corticosteroid metabolism. Our circadian clock is set. Our lymph nodes are clean. So many wonderful things happen when you see that morning. No, no, we have 24 into 7 party culture. We don't know when the sun rises. No, 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 we have technology, we will have 
light therapy so <laughs> that you go to seattle we have all light therapies okay poor fellows seattle fellows don't have sun so it's okay but that's become trend technology oh you have problem oh, go, go and sit in the sun in, uh, sit in that uh, light therapy so we are uh, we are mri we have ct scan we have pet scan this scan that scan all these are just in fact irrelevant for health irrelevant for health don't get me wrong when i say this i am saying with this particular reason well, health is not going to come with the light therapy with the mri with this 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 thing we ought to do things naturally because vitamin d is going to come natural and only that can be of help for you to get back your health vitamin b12 is made by the microbes that are inhabiting your gut not by eating bear's liver or salmon fish which is claimed oh you eat this you get vitamin oh meat eaters only get vitamin b12 no vegetarians don't get vitamin b12 so you have capsules you have injections you have this you have that no it's not going to work because that's not the way it works in our bodies as simple as that so you need to take fermented porridge and that was the way local food culture was in almost all parts of each and every continent fermented foods were the means of establishing this wonderful relationship with nature in the microcosm of the microbial world and it is the bridge when you die when you put into the soil the body is converted into minerals and then the plant can grow there that means a vegetarian becomes non vegetarian with the help of microbes in your gut and the microbes make non vegetarian into vegetarian due to fermentation process and that's what happens when milk is fermented with lactobacillus you get curds buttermilk buttermilk is vegetarian milk is non vegetarian so what it means is you do not consume this animal protein you can consume this buttermilk which is not animals these are the food practices in many parts of the world even tribal people even today follow this all these things are wiped out in the name of consuming culture of this pizza burger kfc whatever you name it this is a sad story of human race in the last 50 40 years all in the name of science all in the name of science and advancement and here we have men pregnant for life long and women 9 months pregnant because the glucose imbalance is pushing the glycogen fat meat we are not knowing anything about no no we are obese we go to gym and we do this we do that unless you change your food it's not going to work then all this so called you fast don't eat you diet you take leaves you take this you take that how much leaves you want to eat how much fruits you want to eat they are all water 95% of it is water so you want all the nutrition fulfilled you need to be eating 18 kilos of fruits per day 21 kilos of greens per day or 16 kilos of vegetables can you do that nonsense so it's not sustainable either you understand the problem maybe you are fat very fat you fast for 21 days you will certainly lose some weight but is it sustainable you keep fasting so there has to be a healthy way of doing things it is called conserving the things conserve 
the source, resource, and continue to live sustainably. And that's what these wonderful five grains are, which do not require water to grow. They can grow even in a barren land without water because they require only 15 centimeters of rain, they will grow. They can grow anywhere, on the road, even along the roads. In fact, you have seen, I have seen in Texas, all along your freeways and big roads, you have these wonderful C4 grasses growing. The sisters of these five grains I have told, I have noticed, kilometers ago, miles after miles, the grass is growing. Only if you do not have your manicured lawns, that grass is not real grass. It's a tinkered grass which requires tons of water to grow. You understand what I'm speaking? Are you with me? You are not with me. You are with yourself, thinking what this fellow is talking. And these are the bare facts. These C4 foods with the least amount of water, in fact we have calculated, done a lot of experiments in growing this, in fact we have trained more than 10,000 farmers last 10 years, till the COVID hit the human race. After that we have not yet picked up, we have to start all over again the team to train. We have trained 10,000 farmers, demonstrated in the real field, and we have actually, we can save the soil by no Paris Agreement, no Tokyo meeting, no Davos conference can save the soil. These guys are not going to save the soil, save the rivers, nothing they will do. They will keep having meeting after meeting. In England once, in America once, in India, if, if everything goes, they will have a meeting in India also. Or Brazil, whatever. They will have all ruckus created, all the media focusing, and after coming out of it, yeah, we will have a next meeting. That will be their announcement. It's gone on for the last 50 years. It's you who can save the soil by going to the kitchen and throwing away rice, wheat, sugar, milk, meat, getting back the most conserving food grains called millets which can hold the soil, top soil, five, six inches by their roots. The rice and wheat, when you log the water and put the fertilizers, kill the whole fauna and flora of the soil, the earthworms, everything. That's how you are denuding, deranging, making it barren because salts start accumulating and everything starts dying and it becomes sand after some time. And that's exactly what happened after the modern agriculture set in on this planet. Last 40 years, we have lost 38% of agricultural land becoming desert land. That means if you put a seed, the soil cannot germinate the seed. And that's the definition of losing the soil. And we have regenerated such soils by growing these wonderful grains because it starts holding the top layers. In fact, natural calamities like floods, great winds, and sun, high heat sun, can also damage the top soils. All the protection is given by these C4 grasses because they can absorb the water just from the humidity of the atmosphere and live. And one such grain is codomillet, which is actually called Himalayan millet. Can you believe the America grows even today tons and tons of brown top millet? But what it does, it labels it as not good, uh, not for human consumption. It's called bird feed. Bird feed. 
the best of the grains, the most advanced country on this planet, labels it as not for human consumption. Can you believe this? Because brown top millet has got 12.5% of fiber, both soluble and insoluble. When you make a fermented porridge of this grain and feed the person, it corrects everything starting from mouth to anus. All the systems. So what I am trying to communicate is, I have reversed IBS, Crohn's, cancer of rectum, all these so-called incurable diseases, IBS, steroid, Crohn's disease, steroid. How long? Lifelong. Just like that, in a matter of six months, we have all these guys throwing away their tablets, leading happy, healthy life. The soluble fiber is floating around in the blood, pulling away all the toxic morbid waste created by this unsustainable consuming culture, foods. In fact, I was giving lecture like this in one of Indian cities. One of the girls who has heard my earlier lectures also stood up and said, Sir, don't use the food, it is junk. Yes, people started at least nowadays calling in America junk food. Good, at least you are now calling it is junk food. In fact, it is junk. That's what we are trying to communicate. Because it has nothing to do with our health. It is nothing to do with our nutrition. It has nothing to do with living. It is creating sickness. Sickness of great impact on this planet. And the food production of these chosen materials is causing the imbalance in the macro level to the extent that we are going to dig our pit right in front of our generations are disappearing soon. What more are you waiting for? Tell me, I am asking these simple questions. These are the bare facts. What are we waiting for? Are we not ready to change? Is there enough deterrent for you to stop for this change? So I have been running around and asking these simple questions. What are we gifting our kids? The disease? The inability to make kids? No sperm count. Now the pathology labs go and give for sperm analysis 20 millions. Okay, normal, they are writing. Just 25 years ago it is 120 millions. So we are lying to the kids, saying that 20 million sperm count is okay and normal? How stupid can we get? All these things are bothering me for the last 40 years. And luckily we have found solutions because there were many cases infertility. Just before I took flight to America, I had a couple, 48-year-old man and 38-year-old lady, Indian couple, of course, they are living here, right in Texas. Came to my clinic, touched my feet and said, now we have a wonderful baby. We had IVF three times, three abortions, not able to bear kids. I told them the same story and gave him a booklet handbook, rather, what to do, what not to do. So, we have listed do's and don'ts. Don't drink milk, don't eat this, don't eat rice, don't touch it, everything we have listed. So, we have in fact made 
eight different oils, grains, lens, lentils, pulses. So like that, whatever the human race is eating, we have do's and don'ts. And there is a logic behind it. There is a reason behind it. There is a science behind it. By correcting this, lo and behold, and the couple was declared, you cannot have babies because they have done everything that is possible for these so-called technologies. This imbalance has created many bald heads. I mean, by 20 year old in India, all are becoming bald, young boys and young girls are going to beauty parlors. The face, upper face, lip and nothing else, go to beauty parlor. I'm very busy. My appointment is the beauty parlor. I have to go. The problem is your milk, your coffee, your tea. And it is coffee and tea which has denuded almost all over the planet, all the mountain areas being occupied by coffee and tea and the big trees have disappeared and that's why our rivers are disappearing. So how do you save rivers? By you stopping to drink coffee and tea only can save our rivers. You cannot save rivers planting trees alongside the rivers. Got to go where the river starts. And that is in the mountains and we have denuded it. And that is the sponge that holds the water and makes the rivers perennial. Now everything has become, tomorrow there is no river. In fact, Kaveri is dried up. It flows only three months. Ganga is drying up. Because the glacier is drying up. There are no plants there. That's why when it heats up, floods. Same thing, just like our blood is getting flooded with glucose, we are getting flooded with it because it is the fiber of the forest that holds the water, releases them slowly and steadily and that's how beautiful nature is for you to have regulation, control. So it is the fiber even in the macro dimension which controls nature. And it is the beautiful leaves with the hygroscopic bacteria that creates the rain cycle, the water cycle. So, what are we doing? In the name of producing food, in courts, we have done this damage. So how do you save your soil, save your rivers, save the planet? Eat millets. Simple. And this is the only thing that can save the soil, the only thing that can save rivers, only thing that can save the planet. Nothing else can save. No amount of technology, oh we will do this, we will send a, some satellite, figure this out, figure, nothing is going to work. Here is, here is where we have lost that. Here is where you have to search. So leave everything, I will go to Mars because I have a racket, I have a missile to go there. Though go there what? What do you do? There also you have to shit. But the shit is not coming out because there is no fiber in your body. No problem, we have laxatives. So even if you go to Mars, you are constipated. You need millets. So technology is not going to take you anywhere. It is the natural things that can take you somewhere. That's what is going to give you peace, health and joy. So it is the trees, it is the grass, it is the fauna and flora in its full bloom that can make you happy and healthy. Here we are as a planet, human race, losing every year minimum of 2 to 8 percent of fauna flora. 68 percent of the fauna flora is extinct now. We have lost so many food seeds because we are eating only these small selected 
consuming culture food, factory food. How scientific are we? So it's high time human race recognized this and if I were to have my way, I would stop everything tomorrow. But it's not possible. No government is going to take such policies. They are least bothered, they are least interested. So who can change this? Each and every individual on this planet can do the job. You just have to go to your kitchen and cook millets. Once you start eating millets, the barren land farmers will start growing. And these so-called corporate food scientists will say, there is not enough food. That's why we are doing all this for you. Lo and behold, experts, the yields of rice and wheat have started coming down. In the next five years, you cannot grow anything because the temperature is going to go three degrees more. All these C3 foods are going to kaput. That's a fact. Come to millets. 10 degrees to 45 degrees, no problem. No problem at all. And that's science for you. That's more smart of you. Don't build smart cities. Build smart food. That's what is going to save you. So you got to de-urbanize. Go back, touch the soil, grow the food. All over the world you can grow this food. Go to Gulf countries, you can grow the food. Go to Himalayas, you can grow the food. Go to the Ganges Delta regions, you can grow this food. Anywhere and everywhere. And that is the real science. Anytime, anywhere, you can do the things. That's why I refuse to say, I am not doing magic. I am doing science. Though for fun, people are all calling me magic man, millet man, uh, miracle man. I refuse to accept all these adjectives. This is science of millets. Solid, repeatable, anytime, anywhere, every time. Human race lived on these grains millennia all over the world. I told you, brown top millet is American millet, little millet is African millet, Bornean millet is German millet, Himalayan millet, Chinese millet, Kodo millet, fox style millet is Italian millet. There are references back in the history, many, many. Muhammad Paigambar ate Bornead millet, Last Supper, Unleavened bread is by fox style millet or uh, brown top millet. And come to India, we have full of references of these grains. Come to my Karnataka, Mysore, we have etched in beautiful art of our Beluru Halabidu and the ladies holding the pinnacles, the fruits or the millets, not this oblong rice or wheat. I, I can go on blabbering many, many incidents of our Puranas. Rama ate uh, millet, uh, millet, Varaha ate fox style millet, Venkateshwara ate Sama millet. I mean, I can tell you stories. I, I, I don't want to bother you with those stories. So it is millets, millets, millets everywhere. Fifty, sixty years back, there were millets. And luckily, I got the wind of these millets going to disappear. And in fact, they were not there. I had to run around pillar to post, village to village. In fact, it took me two, two and a half years to collect this fistful of these grains. And whatever little they were growing, just like America, they were also feeding these two birds. Amazing. And so we did all this work from 1997 to 2005, 7, 8 years. 
and convince myself that this is the solution for our health, for our food, for sustainable living on this planet. Because we can save the soil, we can save, and in fact, rice fields and growing cows is the only reason for methane increase in the greenhouse gases. And methane is eight times more potent than carbon dioxide for your kind information. So, the first thing you want to stop, if you want to stop greenhouse gases, is growing rice and growing cows on this planet. But we are just doing that, nothing else. So, how do we stop the greenhouse warming, I mean global warming? So, if you can all eat, uh, stop eating rice, wheat, milk, coffee, tea, sugar, and that's the only solution we have. But then what are these experts talking? Do this, do that, transportation, all centralized and you increase the use of energy and they are actually diverting our attention saying carbon fruit, wind, that, this, all these big, big, high sounding, big terminology. Food that has screwed up our planet. So unless you all stop cooking, things and start cooking these things in your kitchen, nothing is going to happen. But do you see the simple beautiful thing is that it's in your hands, not on this politician's plate. It's on your plate. So there is no need for policy making changes, this, that, all this angama is not necessary. You are the one who can just go and change your plate, change your kitchen. How beautiful. And this is what prompted me. Oh God, it is so simple. I just have to go and talk to people, not to these big fellows. So I just started in 2005, started going to each and every village and started talking. You know, I visited more than 3,800 villages in Karnataka. Lo and behold, lot of farmers started growing this and lot of people in the urban areas, Bengaluru, Mysore, started eating. And then it caught the attention of one of the ministers by name Krishna Bhare Gauda. He declared, the Karnataka is going to grow millets and he declared as a agriculture minister, farmers growing millets will get 3,000 rupees per acre. And that increased the yields and now, now Karnataka is the number one place in the whole world to produce these millets. So encouraged by that, he went and met, I think uh, it is Nirmala Sitaraman, our finance minister, and she was instrumental in going and proposing it to United Nations, and then they declared 2023, the next coming year, as year of the millets. At least people should talk about millets next year. If not do anything else, at least the whole world will talk about millets next year. But by then, uh, Indian government declared as uh, millet in 2016, 17, 18, Karnataka government conducted millet mela. Mela means celebration in Karnataka, in the capital, palace grounds, all over Karnataka farmers came and then we had wonderful sessions. And now in Karnataka we have Bengaluru more than 50 restaurants serving millet food. So I was encouraged and then I started, in fact I had forgotten Telugu language and I started learning Telugu and started visiting Andhra and Telangana states. Before that it was undivided, then it is now divided into states. And I have actually already made, uh, made more than 380 sessions in these two states. And they have also got the wind of it in Hyderabad now has got five to ten millet restaurants running. So it's just that you feed these diabetic conditions. And then I went to Gujarat, I went to Punjab, I went to Chhattisgarh, I went to <coughs> Bengal state. <coughs> all the people now, we have distributed seeds all of these states and we are starting to grow this food. And to tell you the fact is the most nutritional grains on this planet worked out, established 
and demonstrated to reversing back many of these diseases. In fact, we have listed in our PDF, the handbook, Dr. Khadar Lifestyle, Science and Art of Living, 108 diseased conditions and what millets used to eat in what proportion, three days, if your hormonal imbalance is there, just for example, I'm going to tell you, just excuse me for a minute. Yeah, I don't use tissue paper. We carry kerchief. I have never used tissue paper. So we keep cutting. Thanks. So tomorrow onwards, everyone cat carry a kerchief. <clears throat> My wife gives me ten kerchiefs, and it's very difficult for me not to lose here and there, and I get lesson. You cannot handle ten kerchiefs and bring them back? <laughs> but I am managing at least eight kerchiefs to go back. So, these kinds of practices to mind, to be aware, to be part of the environment, to be part of the nature, to be part of conserving culture, is what our country has taught us in various dimensions. So, live and let live, not consume everything. Here we are consuming the future is resources also, not leaving just even for our human beings. Because the choice of food has gone wrong in the last 50-60 years. And off late everyone is telling, sustainable we will have genetically modified food, this food, that food. And we can grow food, not for 7 billion people, 70 billion people. Just Texas alone can feed <laughs> the whole world. You have so much land and so much resources. But we need to choose the right thing. And you know, we went to Punjab and Punjab said, the geology department, the archaeology, they came up with uh, big models. Seventeen years of water is left in Punjab, under water table. And they are all worried, how do we do, what do we do? I said, don't worry, just shift from rice wheat cycle to millets, that will come for you 510 years. Very simple. Where is 17 years? Where is 510 years? That means you all eat one year rice and wheat. I will eat millets. I can eat for 30 years with the same resources that I have used to grow. One is to 30 years. And you see how I call this consuming culture and this conserving culture. So we all need to shift from economic model to ecological model. And curing diseases is just a bonus. And we are establishing a sure and scientific process of generating healthy generations ahead of our future. I am so confident in uttering these words. If only human race chooses to change the food, you will change the life on this planet. Don't think this is over. How does this fiber work in the macro level? I have explained to you at the macro level. Micro level, these are actually, these millets alone have got what are called lignons. The upper layers of this grain are interlocculated with this fiber which the lignons reside. That's why you need to eat unpolished rice. But then when you again get into machines, big machines to dehusk, you lose the top layers. Of course, the fiber is there, enough fiber is there. But then some particular diseases like cancer, immune problems, autoimmune diseases, deeper 
not organelle, not cellular, micro, physiological diseases can be touched upon by these wonderful lignans because they have got the PMF called proton motive force. They don't have protons, but a pool of electrons, free moving electrons in the aromatic rings of lignans supplies this wonderful PMF at various grades. And that is the beauty of this lignans, which is speciality or rather found only in this millets, five millets. So when you supply these lignans, which are soluble in your blood, they can meet any EMF, electron mo mo motor force, electron motor fo motive force, EMF. So the toxic morbid waste can be of any potential of electricity, can be annulled by this wonderful PMF of lignans. That's how you cure diseases, because even before the disease is origin, originating, there is annulling of this inflammatory. In fact, Bangar said inflation of this, inflation of that. It is actually inflammation of our living cells that is happening with the food that we have chosen. And inflammation is the initiation of the disease generation, be it cancer, be it immune disease, be it nervous disorders, anything you name it. Actually, sickness is as simple as that. There is a transformed condition to cellular, organelle, and the whole body. You have different names, different. Disease is the same. Inflammation, and that's how you have antioxidants, antioxidants, these people call. And But different antioxidants have different PMFs. That's why all antioxidants, oh, curcumin is good. So go on gobbling up curcumin. That's only one kind of EMF negating. So you cannot have solution from, say, strawberry has some anti-inflammatory, anti antioxidant. But it cannot solve all the problems. You need to have a broad range of PMF. What I'm trying to communicate it is the energy in different levels, different quantums that have to be nullified. And that's in the technical scientific jargon so called EMF. If EMF is generated, and that is the toxic morbid waste, that is our biochemical processes. Even if you eat the best of the best food, no toxicity, no fertilizers, no pesticides, nothing, just organic food you eat, you are going to generate waste or toxic materials. As simple as carbon dioxide coming out, when you burn glucose, ATP is produced, and that ATP is the battery for energy, that is the living energy. So without ATP, you cannot move your finger, you cannot move, you cannot even breathe. Even to breathe, the lungs to expand and contract, you need energy, and that comes from ATP, and when you produce ATP, you are getting carbon dioxide out. And if you keep the carbon dioxide in, so you are going to die. And I believe that is the popular chosen method in America. Go into the garage, switch on the car and die. Because carbon dioxide. So that means when you produce energy, the most beautiful biochemical reaction, burning of glucose, carbon dioxide is released and that carbon dioxide is carried by hemoglobin to the lungs and you exchange oxygen going in, carbon dioxide coming out. And this is the beautiful process of our respiration, which is just the opposite of photosynthesis, wherein carbon dioxide is taken by the chlorophyll, fix it as glucose, and that is transformed into various diversified food material. We consume it, digest it into glucose, release into the blood, and this is the cycle. And we are doing something wrong here. And that's why we have problems. Correct this cycle by choosing the regulation of slow and steady. And who does that? Lignans. Because to release the glucose, you need the fiber, which is interlocked with... So, no carbs, 
the so called nutrition it is the carbohydrate that is doing it is not the carbohydrate doing the damage you need carbohydrate but you need it in a regulated fashion and no one on this planet has identified this it is the regulated release of the carbohydrates platform for health and hence these are the grains that give you health and that's why we call them positive grains and in our language we give the name siri because it is the ultimate wealth is health so in our language we call the best of the best of the wealth is siri and that's how you have shri so the siriness makes you sri shri is a, a, a term used for a fellow who is very rich shri and then the quality of the shri is siri so the grains that are giving us this wonderful the best of the best of the wealth is health so we call them siri dhanya dhanya means grain so positive grains and that's how these five grains are grouped as positive grains siri dhanya and we have also worked with another five millets called finger millet proso millet uh pearl millet great millet and maize the corn not the sweet corn of gmo we have got original uh, local varieties of of course in fact the best food of america is actually the corn the pumpkin and the beans and that is the real agriculture and in fact the combination of corn pumpkin and beans will make any soil come back to its fertility and this is the agriculture practice thousands of years ago by red indians if you just go back and read the history of america so every planet actually had wonderful agricultural practices aiding regenerating replenishing the soil for time immemorial but in the name of modern agriculture in the name of modern living in the name of science in the name of technological advances we have been digging our grave it's high time we said goodbye to this and start a wonderful journey of millets which can start aiding us to reestablish the connections we have lost with nature and all the diseases that you are all grappling with thyroid problem hiv problem h1n1 ibs so we have listed step by step and we have got brief introduction of this grains and we also have dwelt the sweet problem and say so you are saying don't eat sugar then what do we eat we have recognized and identified the sweet that was used long ago in by many ancient cultures toddy palm palm jaggeries fish tail palm silver date palm khajur palm these syrup that actually is pumped up when the inflorescence is becoming the fruits is fructose based so the fructose is the sister of glucose isomer of glucose which gives you the sweet taste but is not participative in any of our biochemical reactions only if it is necessary fructose is converted to glucose is a series of 18 20 steps so but then it is water soluble so when you eat it just goes away so we excrete four different kinds of excreta shit urine sweat and the carbon dioxide so all these four excreta are distinctly different so you cannot say i am just shitting and i will not urinate i will not sweat i will not no only that particular mode of excreta has certain amount of particular toxic morbid waste eliminated so it is imperative that everyone has these four functions going right in your system so how do you sweat unless you 
work or walk at least. Of course, you can sit in a spa and think you are sweating and that's not natural. So the natural sweating is, I mean, this so-called nutrition, this so-called panchakarma, you go and put, push them in that and, oh, you are sweat, huh? you are gone. A tick mark. No, that's not going to work. You have to really sweat. So, go and walk for long distance. And in fact, the first drops of sweat come here. Basically, the storehouse of lymph nodes. Many of the lymph nodes are here. And that's where the sweat. In fact, if you walk 40-45 minutes, you see sweat coming. And that's when you are really sweating. In fact, you can go to Mount Hood, which I, have, I was living in when I used to go and ski. Even in that thick, cold temperature, after 20-30 minutes you ski, a simple ski, you know, not uh, uh, running into the mountain hills and all that is not. I'm just simple skiing. Even in that cold, after 15-20 minutes you start sweating here. Yeah. And of course after that slowly your body sweats. And that's what you need to do because that's what gets the toxic morbid waste excreta out your body and that's important it happens at least once in two days minimum so the best practice you can do is just in fact places like mysuru and all i need to walk minimum of one or one hour 15 minutes and that is the time required to burn five grams of glucose in your body which actually is hba1c being five you see that it's so many things are associated with this wonderful act of walking. So if you walk one hour, 15 minutes on a regular basis, there is dialysis of the blood in your system and it is exactly six liters of blood gets dial dialysized. Our nowadays you have dialysis machines, you know, oh come on, CKD patients, left and right we are producing. Ah, oh, we have dialysis machines. Dialysis has to happen naturally. And that happens when you walk. You don't need dialysis machines. You need culture of walking. So when you walk, you, your blood gets dialyzed, your sugar gets burnt, so that there is potential of sh glucose into the blood. So when you eat, you are hungry, you eat well, things start flowing. The regulation happens just like that. So it is natural. In fact, human being is made by God as a walking machine. Just walk. There is no animal blessed with this mechanism, this structure. You walk. You walk. And that's when you clean everything. And in fact, our yoga culture says Sahaja Yoga. It means you have Ma Mayurasan, you have Bakasan, you have Mandukasan. What is your asana? Your asana is walking. And in fact it is called Sahaja Yoga. Means you don't do anything, just walk and you are done with your yogas. Walk long distance, two hours, three hours, good for you. Yeah, I think I just want to cover all the things so that you don't have any questions. <laughs> yeah, I actually I have talked everything. Almost everything. I covered a lot and there is one thing called decoctions because there are a lot of good things. All antioxidants and wonderful chemicals tucked in and antigen properties of decoctions that is any immunity can be regenerated by antigens that can be exposed to your antibody producing unity called immune system. So if you are training your immune system by exposing yourself with various bacteria and viruses present in nature, that is, the stromata of the leaves have got various kinds of biodiversified microbes. So when you just boil leaves and take the decoction, you are giving antigenic properties to be exposed to your immune system. That's how you can protect, not from COVID-19, COVID-99, I don't care, bring and give me a cup of that, I will drink and nothing happens to me because I have got my internal immunity ready, strong, period. So any kind of health issues, you got it covered all here in this system when you are with nature. 
So in fact, in India, in a lot of our Puranas, it is told, if you are just walking around trees and creepers, you are immune strong. These are the words used directly. I mean, you will not be troubled by any kind of Vishajwaras. That's the uh, statement. Vishajwaras are all viral fevers that they are talking about. So, we have covered everything that has happened till today for human race. Infectious diseases, chronic diseases, acute diseases, name it, we have it. And all is incorporated in that small book called Dr. Khadar Lifestyle, The Science and Art of Living. And there is a Facebook page on the same name. You all can join, ask your questions. Of course, we do have some time for questions. Thank you for all your patient listening. And I have to specially thank my dear friend Raj, without whom these things would not happen. I just thank you, sir. And thank Bangar, sir, has also actually started to take active participation. So I, I, I am equally thankful to this wonderful man. Thank you. Actually, uh, we have, we'll take a few questions uh, before that. Uh, I know that after doctor leaves to India, you, some of you may be having a lot of questions. So I give my phone number. We are maintaining a couple of WhatsApp groups in Houston. We have been maintaining for the last four years. The lot of millet warriors are actually there. We are sharing a lot of knowledge. So make a note of my number in case you have any questions. You can actually send me a request. I will, if you want to join the group, I can actually add you to the group. And uh, yeah, so and also like uh, a lot of volunteers have really worked hard and cooked uh, uh, millet food. I kindly request you to go there and taste it and at least feel how the millet food uh, tastes like. Uh, it's really delicious. My number is 832-797-3298. I repeat, my number is 832-797-3298. And also, like, uh, fortunately, we have uh, Sudhi here, who is running a, an organic store called uh, Organic Spear. Yeah, who sells... Um, uh, all these quality millets and and uh, wood driven uh, bull driven gana oils if anybody has any questions about that he has brought some samples please talk to him he's a really good guy and he has been really helping uh, our millet movement but uh, yeah please join our groups in case you have any questions you can post there are a lot of good uh, millet warriors with vast experience so you get a lot of uh, information there thank you Sudhi is saying that it's just not taste. You all have to eat all these things, then only you are, you are allowed outside. Okay? So, 